Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy and Star Sign Readings with myself, Thomas Janak. We're looking at the week of November the 9th to November the 15th of 2020. And on the 14th, Mars retrograde ends. And on the 15th, the last day for this week, we have a um, new moon. And so what that means is, as we're coming out of retrograde at the end of the week and having new beginnings, we can now look at um, our darker side, can look at things where we're still failing, where we still get angry at things when we possibly shouldn't. Look at our own shortcomings, but also look, look at our own judgments. <clears throat> so that's to come for the end of the week with a renewed sense of strength actually. <clears throat> we can go into this. So it will be very interesting to see um, what the week after this one will bring. But in my experience um, the universe is trying to prepare us um, and so we will have a look at the overall energy in a minute. Here is just something that comes to my mind. When you know that a retrograde is ending. You still need some time to figure out, whoa, that was really heavy, what's going on now? And then you have a new moon the very next day where they're saying is, well, don't overthink, come on, chop, chop, have a look at what's going on, if that makes sense. You feel, you might feel a little bit um, huh, burdened. You might feel a little bit like, whoa, all of a sudden, I feel restless and the reason why that is, is because we're being asked to look at things that don't quite work so that we can overcome them, change them, find new ways um, so that we are not only better people but also happier people. So what I did knowing that this is happening with the moon and with the retrograde before I even know the um, overall energy I stripped it all down. I really thought about, you know, what is the essence <coughs> of um, everything. And so I learned to be grateful for quite a number of things that I have. And guess what? My most pressing question at the moment is, do I wear my yellow shoes or my red shoes? <laughs> and this may sound weird, but that's really the main pressing questions is, is just a, a, a making a choice between colors, if that makes sense. Because why, why give in to anything upsetting? Yes, I look at it. Yes, I deal with it because what other choice do we all have, right? But um, worrying about stuff means you lower your energy already. And remember, the higher your energy is, the better everything really works. And it is infectious, if that makes sense, because you manifest people and you meet people that respond to your energy. So if your energy is low or you're in self-loathing, um, you will find people that will tell you all the things that are wrong with you from their point of view, <laughs> right? Pointless. Anyway, so we are still in Scorpio. Um, but before we go into this first star sign, we're going to have a look at the overall energy for the week ahead. But please strip it all down, begin to say, let's have a look, what are the, the essential things I should be looking at? Okay? And it makes sense now because we have the crocodile and the bull. So going at the end of the week into this feeling of being asked to use the new energy that the new moon brings on the Sunday, the 15th, um, we need to get ourselves there, right? And the crocodile is basically the animal that tells you that. Because the crocodile is an animal that can have uh, up to nine little crocodiles in the pouch of their mouth and bring them to safety. So they have a very caring side about them that you just never see because it wouldn't make the rating, right? We want them to be monsters, isn't it? In a way, oh, crocodiles, oh, they're all so ancient, la la la, you know? Um, 
So we are judging sometimes based on what we've been told. And so this is another thing that is coming your way. If people tell stories about you, let them. You're not in the story. Not my monkey, not my circus. Or the other way around. I don't, I'm not quite sure. The point is, don't allow yourself to be affected by the opinion of others. And remember, yes, you have rough edges. Don't we all? <laughs> But they're also part of you. But underneath that armor that you built to protect yourself and the people you love, you are a caring person, a deep, caring person. And the bull, which is the animal that we have as well, the crocodile and the bull, is saying, because we're going towards the end of retrograde and new beginnings, we need strengths, and therefore this is the week where we need boundaries. Really, really important. Okay, so that was that. Um, going into the first star sign of the week, which is Scorpio. Let's have a look what we got. Scorpio. Hmm. You have the butterfly and the tiger. So what they're saying to you is, you are ready to face whatever is coming your way. And I have to sort of clear this, clarify this, because this is not a week where the energy is super low and everything is against you. Not at all. Or against all of us. Either. either, either. <laughs> Each of us. Either of us. I don't know. You know, bloody foreigner. Can't speak English. Here the point I'm making is <coughs> we're all in this feeling um, of, you know, change because we're going through change. And all the guides are saying is this is not a week of low energy and we're here to help. And now Scorpio, you have the butterfly, which means you're more than ready to... Um, That's the word I'm getting. To start anew, and you need to watch your balance, right? That doesn't mean you have to watch your balance uh, because you're wobbly, <laughs> right? So this is obviously symbolism. What they're saying is you have to watch your balance, right? How do you um, ride the currents of your life, right? Make sure you always stay balanced. And here's another important thing because you have the tiger. The tiger is saying, You're more than ready to deal with whatever life throws at you, right? And also you're being asked to look at it, if that makes sense. But you have an awful lot of stamina and it is your unique understanding of how the universe affects you, knowing that outside forces can clearly affect you. That's why it is so important for you to realize how much stamina you have and how much strength you have. And there's just nothing that can stop you, right? Quite positive for Scorpio <clears throat> going into Sagittarius. Let's have a look. Sagittarians, you are asked to keep going no matter what, right? Giving up is not an option. Feeling low about things is a choice. If that makes sense, what the guides are saying is always work towards having high energy, right? That's what, you know, playing air guitar is for. That's also what meditation is for. That's also what walks uh, in the forests are for. So there's always enough um, to recharge your energy and your batteries uh, out there. But for now, they're asking you not to make any rush decisions and do not throw in the towel anywhere, simply because at the end of the week, The energy changes, and because the new moon is on the Sunday, next week is going to be a much more powerful week to make bigger change. Right? That's all they're saying is, but you have the feather, which means for now, just go with the flow, keep on going, and at the same time, while you're not throwing in the towel anywhere and you keep on going, It is important to make sure you have enough time to rest. So again, remember uh, the, the, the star sign before you, Scorpio, had some boundaries. I'm hearing the same for Sagittarians. Have some boundaries. Make sure your energy is safe. 
Okay, that was Sagittarians going into Capricorn. Here we go. <laughs> we oftentimes have overlapping energy and this is just one of those weeks where we have that. <laughs> because you have the spider and the heron. So what they're saying to you is, again, this is all about boundaries apparently this week, you decide how much space you give to situations and to individuals in your life. You decide how much you let things bother you. What I'm getting for Capricorn this week is um, that it feels almost like this is the way the, the guys make me feel, as if you're accused wrongly of something. And here's the answer, truth needs no defense. Don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter what people think. They, 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 they do think what they, what they want anyway. Right? So what I'm hearing is, is for you to just use this week and um, look at how much energy you actually give to certain situations. Okay? And just stay calm. New opportunities will come to you. And then as usual, like I said uh, in this video here, um, there is a new moon on the 15th, new beginnings. So what they're saying is you just rest and just observe and maybe give less space and less energy to situations that are difficult. Um, and that's all you need to do this week. Okay? That was Capricorn going into Aquarius. Let's have a look. Okay. Aquarians are affected this week by their past. You have the puma and the monkey. And what that means is you are a person that adapts to situation rather well, sometimes too well, but there's a part of your energy that is also still affected by the limitations some people once attributed to you. So the feeling I'm getting is that someone said to you like, oh, you know, you're just silly, you can't do this, right? And so any childhood trauma is what they're giving me. Um, that sits inside you, doesn't suit you and doesn't serve you anymore. And this is the week to say, I am powerful, right? And I have the desire to heal. And so I'm done with being judged by my past. If people want to judge you, again, I said that earlier, truth needs no defense. Let them judge you all they want, right? It's their karma, not yours, okay? Short and sweet for Aquarius. Going into Pisces, my star sign. Let's have a look. Uh-oh. <laughs> Pisceans, we have the shaman of birth and the hunter of conflict, which means we are asked to look at creating a better future for ourselves, birthing something, give birth to um, new energy, to new ideas. So for us Pisceans, or for you Piscean out there, um, think about what it is you really feel and you really want to do and then really, in another way, go for it. Really, really important because we also have the hunter of conflict, which means when we think about, I'm going to change this, not everybody is going to be happy about it. And all the guides are saying is, sounds horrible, who cares? Right? Everybody creates their own happiness. The guides are just here to help and facilitate. Right? And what they're saying to us Pisceans, there's the hunter of conflict, which means in order for us to make bigger changes, we have to either, that's what I'm getting, we have to just go through that conflict. And it is not necessarily conflict with people in the now. This might also be remnants of past experiences, um, especially when it comes to relationships. This is about... Um, remembering <laughs> um, older love relationships and without being judgmental as to why it didn't work, uh, as Pisceans, we should take a look at what still sits inside us and let that go 
because you know beating yourself up over it or thinking whatever comes to mind or even being angry um, at situations or or people is absolutely pointless because all it does is um, create low energy right so the hunter of conflict is real <coughs> where it's not going to be um, plain sailing but because we have the shaman of birth the trick is really to say like okay what do I want to do do I want to move don't think well I want to move but I haven't got the means say the universe okay well I want to move so I'm manifesting that right job done back to my piece of cake so I know this sounds a bit weird but what I'm getting is you know you 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 state what you want to experience you manifest and then going to worry about it lowers the energy this is really important not to lower the energy and not just for Pisceans okay anyway that was for us Pisceans going into Aries For Aries, we have, in a way, what, whatever, the, us Pis, whatever the Pisceans had, um, up a notch. <laughs> because you have the Hunter of Death and the Shaman of Song. Which means you really need to end procrastinating. You need to end living with burdens, with old baggage really really important that's your job for this week is to say like i'm focusing on myself what is interesting about um aries is what the guides give me they show me um people jogging <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to start running it just means that you know um you go into exercising you go into doing something it changes your your um uh, uh, dolphins uh, what are they called and endorphins <laughs> rather right so it changes your outlook and all, all, all I'm hearing or seeing is here, what the guides are saying is for Aries, um, start by being more active because your mind then has something else to do because procrastinating and overthinking are very much in the forefront this week for Aries. And here's the good thing, you have the Shaman of Song. The Shaman of Song is basically meaning lighthearted, yay. All they're saying is you, you do that, you look into changing your energy by doing something just for you not to compete just for you and you will learn to sing again you will learn to enjoy life more and experience living in the now because that's another thing that i'm getting for aries you're not always good at there's always something about the past that may piss you off <laughs> there's always something about the future um, that makes you worried and all the guys are saying is no, 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 no. All you have is now, right? So they're asking you to look at your now, change it. And if you are a person that is already working out, then all that really means is that you're doing this and very likely your brain patterns still go into overthinking, right? Again, it's just symbolism, but this is really, really important. So for Aries, you can achieve a lot by changing your physical movements this week if that makes sense okay there was aries going into taurus let's have a look what we got for taurians <laughs> it's not so bad <coughs> it's just you have the ancestor of illusion and the hunter of dreams so this is going to be the week where you will sort of or need to sort of wake up and go like, okay, I've been chasing this. And this is the word they give me. I've been chasing this. It's not that you chase things for no avail. No avail. But um, it just didn't quite work. It didn't come to fruition. Your hopes weren't met. And the guides are saying is, if you are a person that can relate to that, feeling, you know, been trying so, so hard and it's just not happening, um, then reflect on it and make changes because you have the ancestor of illusion, which means you tried for the longest time hoping things will change. It's very unlikely it will, otherwise you wouldn't have the uh, ancestor of illusion because the next one that you have is the hunter of dreams. So as you reflect on this isn't really working, right? you then begin to look at what else you could allow to come into your life okay so that's that that was um 
Taurus going into uh, Gemini. I get another thing before we go to Gemini for, for Taurians, which is that you need to understand that you are very, very kind. And sometimes you don't see it. Um, it's easier for you to bash yourself over the head <laughs> than to um, allow yourself to know that you're a good person, right? So, sorry, Geminis. We're going into Gemini right now. <laughs> Geminis, you have the Kingfisher and the Fox. Quite an easy week, therefore, because remember we're heading towards the end of a, of, of a retrograde, Mars retrograde, and it's on the 14th, and we're heading into a new moon on the 15th, right? So the Kingfisher is saying to you, no matter what life throws at you this week, you are more than capable of dealing with it. And the Fox is basically telling you, well, you're an old soul. So, and the reason why you manage to deal with everything is because you have been through so many situations and to so many experiences and you always came out alive, not necessarily unscathed, but alive and uh, well. And all the guides are saying is, remember that whatever life throws at you this week, it's actually short and sweet, um, you will be just fine to deal with it. So, because they're bringing this up, it's important for Gemini's not to even think about going into depression. This is easier said than done if you have mental health issues, if you are a person that suffers from anxiety or depression. But all they're saying is, this week it's really important for you to keep your energy high to make sure that the effects of suffering from, 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 the, from, from this um, are less devastating, if that makes sense, right? Okay, so now we're going from Gemini into Cancerians, Cancer. Let's see what we got for Cancerians. Okay, Cancerians. <laughs> okay, sounds a bit weird, but the message really is it's not going to be that great a week. So I'm not trying to, to, um, to start tracking you down. That's not what the guides are trying to do, but I have to say what they tell me. <laughs> If that makes sense, because you have the turkey and the ferret, <coughs> both animals denote the fact that despite all your skills, despite everything you give, some people just don't get you. In some situations, even though you clearly highlight that you could do this, that you want to do this, they just don't bite. So therefore, what is important this week is to literally sit back and realize this is not a great week for the star sign of Cancerians, for deep, drawn-out explanations and conversations. It's more a week of saying, okay, with the retrograde ending that late in the week, on the 14th, and the new moon on the 15th, I had better sit back, right? And um, also feel like, you know, while you're sitting back, don't make any rush decisions. Don't feel nothing is working for me, if that makes sense. All the guides are saying is, to a certain extent, you know, that feeling would be true. But when you say nothing is working for me, you're asking for it. <laughs> right? So don't, money, don't manifest worse things. All the guides are saying is, why don't you just take a step back? Take a back seat with regards to any action, if that makes sense. Um, and wait for the new moon on Monday to hit us. Because remember, what is important about this new moon and the end of Mars retrograde on the 14th is that we are being asked, actually, at the end of the week, and then we'll see how that goes next week, to hmm, look at our darker side. So, logically speaking, this week prepares you, prepares all of us, to, to a certain extent, be, be, be halted in many ways. And this is what's happening um, the strongest thus far for the star sign of Cancerians. But it's not the end. It doesn't change anything because you are uh, very intelligent. You also are very skillful. Don't forget it because this can only get better. Right? That was Cancerians going into Leos. So we have Leo, Virgo and Libra um, for this week. Let's have a look 
what we got. Leo. Leo guys, Leo guys, <laughs> Leo guys, hey Leo guys. The, the Leos are coming out of a hole, right? Important, because as you're coming out of a hole, knowing that at the end of the week, the energy will even get higher, even though we're being asked to look at our not so great <laughs> sides, you have the ancestor of hope and the ancestor of knowing. In short, that for Leos just means there's new opportunities coming your way and you know when you see them what to do. I do have the feeling uh, doing this, which means some of you Leos will feel, shall I continue this or shall I just do this, if that makes sense. And um, without telling you what to do, the feeling I'm getting is if that hasn't worked, right, whatever that was, um, and you're thinking maybe I should focus more on this, you got your answer already, right? Okay, short and sweet for Leos going into Virgo. And like I said, it's really important um, for, for all of us to remember that the higher the energy we can create, the easier this is going to be for you and for all of us. So going into Virgo now, second last star sign of the week. We're looking at the 9th to the 15th of November 2020. Please subscribe. Please make sure you share this widely. And please join the Facebook page. Really, really important because, you know, why not be up to date with everything and also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Really, really, really important. Okay, so Virgos, we have the dog and the hawk. All they're saying is this week you need to be loyal to yourself. The feeling that I'm getting is that that is not negative situations or people around you so much. It's just demanding situations and people. And when you say, well, loyalty starts with me, it's about reflecting how, how do I actually feel at the moment? Do they train me? Right? And if they train you, don't allow it. I know this sounds easier said than done, especially if it is about work related and you kind of go, well, they pay me for it. Yes, but you know, they can pay you all they want, you know, that doesn't mean they can burden you all day with stuff. You work at your pace, right? Because that's another thing about pacing yourself with the dog, right? Be loyal to yourself. Acknowledge how you feel and do your thing. thing. Look after yourself first, okay? Really, really important. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I, I can already feel people going like, which means they think like, well, you know, isn't the dog loyal to, to me? I tell him what to do, he's happy, <laughs> right? Dogs are domesticated and they have learned a lot. They're awesome, if that makes sense. And they are human pleasers. But the dog is a pack animal and therefore he wants the pack, the whole family, to work. And you can only achieve this by being in harmony with the overall energy that presents itself to you. And what they're saying is, if the overall energy in your unit is a little bit frantic, then you should try to ease that out, right? Um, and have it therefore, have therefore a better life, okay? That's that, and also you have the hawk. I always say that because that's basically the message for the hawk. He uses the upthrust of the air to glide. And all they're saying is, you know, look after yourself, go with the flow, you're going to be just fine. The feeling I'm getting is that, that um, Virgos, you need a little bit of a breather uh, this week and it will not come to you unless you take it, okay, or demand it, for want of a better word. Okay, so we're going into the final star sign for this week, which is Libra. Let's have a look. Ah, you're going to like this, Libra. I don't even know how you call that. Librans? Right? I don't know. Anyway, star sign of Libra, you're going to like this. You have the, the shaman of sorrows and the hunter of abundance, which means while this week emotionally might be a little bit upsetting because 
Remember, we've already been prepared for the following week where we're looking at our darker sides. So this week will already or start off, if that makes sense, with feelings of, whoa, I messed that up. Or they messed that up. They left me in a mess. This left, left me in a mess. <laughs> right? So there's sorrow. There's this feeling of that didn't work. It is unfulfilling. right? And so you can expect to just have a little breakdown here and there. Really important, remember TSR Sacred Medicine, allow yourself to have these moments, right? Okay, but what comes out of it, you have the hunter of abundance. So what that means is, as you're letting go of things that just do not serve you anymore, you open up a complete new world for you and then abundance can come and will come your way if you just allow yourself to go through that upset that is there. And remember, we're being prepared for the week after, <laughs> if that makes sense, where we're having higher energy to look at, um, what's the word, at our, at our deeper sides and, and our scarier sides, the, 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 the darker side of us, right? So this is all coming and so you need, you need to make sure that you cry this out first, let that all go. But immediately, as you let that go, you will feel a, re, a new sense of pride and a new sense of like, yeah, I'm not that bad. And this is really important to remember that. Okay, that was our final star sign for the week, Libra. Thank you all so much for joining me. And I see you all very soon. Okay, love you guys. Bye bye.